The GG Animate package is a great way to make animated plots in R. If you know how to make plots in ggplot, you can add just a line or two of code and turn them into animated plots. Let me show you how. To start out, I am going to load the Refugees package. This is a package made by the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, UNHCR. The UNHCR is one of the organizations that we've supported as part of our 1% for People, 1% for the Planet program, where we donate a percentage of revenue from course sales to organizations. Okay, after I load the refugees package, I have a data frame called population, which I am now going to pop up here so I can take a look at it. It's got a bunch of variables. We don't actually need them all. What we care about is year, and then I'm gonna use COO ISO, which is an abbreviation for the country. COO stands for country of origin, so in other words, where refugees come from. If I scroll over, you can see then I also have a refugees variable here. Now I took that data and I combined it with some other data on the population of each country in order to get a percent value for refugees in each country. I saved that file and now I'm going to load it. So I'll do library tidyverse and then I'm going to load refugees data by reading in this RDS file that I created. And you can see I've got a simple version here which has year, country abbreviation, and then a variable called refugees as PCT, in other words, refugees as a percentage of the total population. And you can see that the top nine here are all from Syria. That comes as a result of the civil war in Syria that began in 2011. Okay, now I'm gonna plot. To do that, I'm gonna load the scales package, which will give me functions to make nicely formatted values in my plots, HRBR themes, which I like to use a theme from, and then of course, GG animate, which I'm gonna to use to make my animation. Now, what I can do is I'm gonna make just a simple plot, not an animated plot, but I'm gonna take my refugees data and I'm gonna filter so that country abbreviation is SYR, in other words, Syria, and then I'm just gonna make a line plot. And you can see I've got some additional functions here that I'm using to kind of improve the aesthetics of it. So if I run that, let me bring this over here. Now, for some reason, the font looks different when I preview it here than it does in the actual blog post, but just know that it will actually use a font called Inter. So you can see I have a very simple line chart, but it becomes very visible in 2011 how the number of refugees from Syria really increases. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my last plot as an object called Syria Refugees Plot. I'm using the last plot function, which just, as you might guess, gets the last plot. So now, to animate this, all I need to do is I do Syria Refugees Plot Plus, and then I select the type of transition that I want to use. I'm going to use Transition Reveal on the year variable, and watch what happens when I do that. You can see now it's making an animated plot and it's revealing the data year by year. So you can really see that jump again starting in 2011. Now the really cool thing about this is it works not just for plots like line charts, but also for maps. Let me show you how we can make an animated map. To do this, I'm gonna load the SF package and then I'm gonna import data into an object called countries data. And this object is geospatial data, which just has country abbreviation, then the continent and subregion. Next, I'm gonna join that refugees data that I had, so right here, with my country's data. I'm gonna join it by country abbreviation. Then I'm gonna filter to only include the subregion Western Asia, which is basically the Middle East. Finally, I'll select year, country abbreviation, and refugees as a percent. So if I run this and I look at Middle East refugees data, you can see we've got year, country abbreviation, refugees as a percent. And then we have that geometry column, which is what is used to make a map. Okay, down here, I'm gonna actually try to make a map. So I'm gonna do Middle East refugees data. I'm gonna pipe that into ggplot. I'm gonna use geomsf. Importantly, on line 69, I'm gonna say, uh, aesthetic properties, fill equals refugees as percent. In other words, I want the shading within each country to differ depending on the value in the refugees as percent variable. I'm making some other uh, changes here, mostly to improve the aesthetics of it. 
So you can see I'm using theme ipsum inter, which comes from HRB themes, some additional theme tweaks. Let me go ahead and run this, make this a little bit wider, and you can see there is my map. Now that's kind of weird, right? Like it doesn't actually show any variation. Well, the reason why is the variation that we might expect to see. For example, we might expect to see Syria having a different color in the earliest years of our data. So in 2000, because I just filtered when I created this data set to only include data from 2000 on, in 2000, Syria had a very low percentage of refugees. So as a result, that actually covers up the later years, not just for Syria, but for all countries. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object called Middle East Refugees Map, which just takes this last plot, so in other words, this here. Now to show you what is going on, I'm going to make a faceted map. So I'm going to make a small multiples map by year. Okay, so when I run this, it's actually kind of hard to see, right? The maps are small. So let me go ahead and just save this. Okay, I saved this as a PDF so I could actually see it, and you can see what we've got here. So now, for example, if I look at 2000, you can see pretty much everything is that kind of dark purple. But starting in 2011 and on, you can see Syria becoming a lot lighter, going into that lighter purple than the kind of orange. And you know, by 2017, it's definitely into that yellow. Making a small multiples map like this is actually quite revealing because it shows what happens to make an animated version of this same map. What GG Animate does is it takes each year and it's going to put it one after the other, sequentially revealing the results of each year and turning it into an animation. So to make an animated version, you can see on lines 108 and 109 where I'm doing Middle East Refugees Map, and then I'm saying plus transition manual year. So I need to do transition manual. GG Animate has a bunch of different types of transition. Given the nature of my data, that it's geospatial data, transition manual is what works. So when I do this, watch what happens. You can see now it's making an animated version and see how, for example, there are refugees from Iraq and then Syria really comes on the scene later on. And again, if you think back to that small multiples map, you can imagine how this is just like one map after another. Now, unfortunately, looking at this animated version of our map, we can't actually tell what year any of this comes from. So if we want to do that, we can use a little trick from GG Animate. See here how I have in current frame? In the map that you're viewing now, the title is just refugees as a percentage of total population. You can see I set it right there. But what I can do here is I can overwrite that title and I can say refugees as a percentage of total population in, and then within curly brackets, current underscore frame. Watch what happens when I run this. So what GG Animate does is it replaces that curly bracket current underscore frame with the year at any point in our animation. So you can see 2005, et cetera, it's going all the way up. And so now it's really obvious what is happening in our animation. I've really just scratched the surface with what you can do with GG Animate. And I definitely recommend that you take a look at the docs. It will give you everything you need in order to make really great animated plots in R.